Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Sometimes hoyas get a little bit long and out of control. I'm going to show you how to manage that chaotic look with something a little bit more simple and organized just by using this coat hanger. This is my Hoya Aldo Ricciai. I did this as a plant trade probably about a year ago. It's grown a lot recently. It's just one long stem. It has branched out in a couple of areas and I did take a, a propagated cutting today. I put uh, I think three cuttings in my perlite prop box just so I can get this plant to be a little bit more bushier. But for right now, this one long stem is just out of control. I want it to look a little bit more presentable, I guess. And it was actually growing up and it looped around my uh, Hoya Carnoso. So I just want this to be a little bit more presentable, uh, a little bit more manageable when I take it off the windowsill so I can uh, water it and do some plant care. But if it doesn't have anything to latch onto or loop around with those uh, tendrils or those runners, then it's really hard to manage it. Um, so I just want to kind of clean this up a little bit. So I just start off by uncoiling the top portion here and sometimes you have to use uh, some a pair of pliers to, to help you out with that. So this is how I start off with uh, like this and I use the wire cutter portion, uh, these little clips to snip off the ends uh, like that. Just so they end up like that and then one on the side as well. So you end up with a hanger that looks like this. And then after that, you just manipulate it into a loop form. It's probably not gonna be absolutely perfect. So you just bend it. You can shape it however you want. It's gonna make that more of like a, a loop. Once you get it into a pretty decent loop, I like to make one side uh, bent. So you bend it inwards and then you have one portion that comes down. And then on this side, I keep it straight just as a little bit of a template that I can go off this one. So it's relatively the same length. You can see the loop up there. And then at around this, I'm just gonna bend it a little bit closer. So I'm going to kind of gauge somewhere up here I'm gonna bend it inwards with my pliers, just like that. So it comes down roughly an inch, and then I will bend it back like this, something like that, so that it equals, I'm just gonna bend it here a little bit, just so that the angles are roughly the same, and the length, it's, it's a little bit off, so if that's the case, if you have one longer end like that, then I can just cut off the excess with my wire cutters here too. So now you have a loop system that looks like this. So it does take a little bit of work, um, just kind of forming it into the loop here, uh, bending out some of these uh, corners and that sort of thing, just so it's a nice presentable. You can always buy this stuff on Amazon, but I literally have, you know, 5 million of these coat hangers in my closet. Then I just followed the basic outline from other uh, wire trellises that I saw online um, and just kind of made my own. Okay, so now you have these prongs I'm going to put on the back of the plant. This one is really long, uh, so it's going to it's gonna take a little bit. So I just stick these two little prongs or feet in the pot and it ends up being at the base of the pot. Now the fun part is just looping it around the wire here. You can use plant ties if you want to, but I'm simply just kind of weaving this in and out just around the loop here just so that it stays nice and upright, something like that. And I'm just going, oops, something cracked. That didn't sound good. I'm trying to use these leaves as anchors along the wire here as well. I gotta secure this a little bit uh, better in the pot. The wire is kind of bouncing out here, but uh, I have to pack it down a little bit better. Once I reach the end, then I'm going to just bring this tendril back along 
on this side of the stem and just continue it all along. On these runners, they have nodes with like very tiny little leaves. So you gotta be really careful not to like damage or bump those uh, little leaves that have yet to form. They do grow as, uh, as the Hoya grow. So I'm coming up on the leafless part. So I'm just being careful not to handle the nodes with like the tiny little leaves. Oh, I did break something off up here. There's some sap. Hopefully I didn't break a leaf off. I don't know where that's coming from, but I'm just gonna continue this along, letting it, oh, I broke the stem. Okay, you can see right here, I broke the stem. There's a little bit of sap that is coming out of the stem. So I'm actually going to cut that off because it's just going to die back. I know there's lots of debate out there whether or not to cut off tendrils. And this is turning out to be a little bit of a disaster for this, but usually I like to let these tendrils just kind of do their thing. And I'm gonna see if I can find a small little node with some leaves on it. It might be difficult because it's got a bunch of sap on here right now. Um, yeah, it looks like I knocked off a couple leaves. They're just the tiniest little nubs on there. And if you bump them or snag them on any of these like uh, plant wires, then you're gonna knock off these leaves and you'll just have uh, basically an empty or bare stem. So I, I, I will usually let these grow because they, as they kind of grab onto things, new leaves will form uh, as well as peduncles. But if they're just out of control and you need to manage um, the plant itself, then you can cut them off as well. You will get a new branch or I will get a new branch from the portion of the stem where I did make the cut from. Let's see if I can find an example on another Hoya here. Right here. So I've previously made a prune right there and you can see it's branched out twice in, on that spot. These are all single node cuttings. So it will branch out again. Here's another example right there. Made the cut and it gets uh, an entirely new stem. So it will regrow. It's not gonna die back or anything like that. So I'll get uh, a new branch from this node right here. Sometimes it'll branch out uh, further along the stem here as well. But when it continues to, or whenever it decides to push out a new stem, then I'll just keep looping it around uh, the plant trails here. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. I wish I had a few more cuttings in here just so that I could um, like loop one around this way and loop one around this way, similar to the Australis. I just put these side by side. I clean this one off as well. You can see it's just looped around the plant wire. So I'm gonna put this back in its uh, bright sunning spot. This is what it looks like when you got a couple stems in one pot, you just uh, loop it around in each direction and it just kind of crisscross. It fills in the area quite nice. Once those cuttings root in the perlite, then I'll put them back in this pot. And once they grow their own new stems, I'll just keep looping it around here into a nice full looking pot. So that's pretty much it for this quick little trellis tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Feel free to check out this video for more houseplant content. Thanks again for watching. Take care, bye.